People say all the time, well, did you get that done? Well, you know, I left them an email. I, I, I left them a voicemail. I sent them three emails. How many times you heard that? When that happens with me, I'm like, ah! I don't show it. I just like, really? Wow, that's fascinating. We'll explain our, about our culture. It's about getting the results. So I can help you if you can't figure another way to do it, but there are maybe 12 other things we might want to do. Maybe they don't have the answer. Maybe somebody else can give us the answer. The outcome was to get this information, not to leave an email or 12 or three voicemails. That will not do any of us any good. How many follow? I work out, I train my mind, I train my body. It becomes a lifestyle. It's not just a, like you're depending upon somebody else. I'm not here to become somebody's guru. I'm not here to give them a gift. I'm here for them to open up their own gifts. And that's really what my work has been. The one thing they all have in common, I think, is they're hungry. And I know that sounds simplistic, but I believe that's the single most important element that separates the quality of people's lives. It's not just the ability to have hunger, but to sustain it. Hunger means that you want more. You want more of yourself. You want to make a bigger difference. You want to be a better parent. You want to, you want to do something more than there is today and that you don't get satisfied. And most people start out with hunger at an early stage of life and they lose it. But the people that come to me are hungry either because something's happened, they've had a birthday with a zero on it, they've gone through a divorce, they're starting a business and they know I've got to have a different level, or they're the best in the world and they're always looking for that edge that makes the difference. Most people in life, we really feel like the level of stress in our life comes to how much of life do you feel like you control? How much does life control you? You tend to control more of what's going on or events controlling you. It's very easy to have those events start to take control unless we take control of what's between our ears, our own mind. You see, what you and I focus on massively affects how we feel, whether we're thriving or surviving. If you focus on what you can't control, if you focus on the past, if you focus on what's missing from your life constantly, that pattern of focus will make you frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed. It won't even matter if you're you know, taking antidepressants. If you keep focusing on what you can't control, what's missing from your life, you're going to feel depressed still. You can take as many antidepressants as you want. You want to use money, not let money use you. So another thing you'll do it is getting rid of drudgeries. Who here loves to pay for shit you don't want to do? <laughs> right? Cleaning the toilet, who likes to have someone else be able to do that if at all possible, right? Because once you do that, those drudgeries are gone. What do you get to do? You have time. And with time, you can spend more time with your passions, the things that matter for you that you can do in the world, that share in the world. And the third thing, and the third thing that gives people the most enjoyment of our money, just so you know, is actually giving it away. And nobody believes that until you do it. Now, if you don't give a dime out of a dollar, you're not going to give a hundred million out of a billion ever. Don't kid yourself. It's the place to start wherever we are. And if you do, I think you can find there's enormous enjoyment in that process. And I think you also find that if there's somebody you love, you do something for it's even more. It's not about the value of your soul. It's about the value of you in the marketplace. There's always two pains in life. There's the pain of discipline or there's the pain of regret. It's not what happens that determines the quality or the quantity of your life. It's not what happens. The world you live in today, the CNBC and the CNN and the Netflix, be happy, just be happy. Be satisfied with what you have. There's no push, man. There's nobody pushing you. How about this? You can do more. How many of you can do more? Oh my God, if that's all you got, how many of you can do more? Well, God damn, if you know you can do more, if you know you can do more, then you have to do more. If you know you can help, if you know you can make a difference, if you don't, you're gonna have this freaking big, big hole inside of you. No, no amount of money can fill this thing up. So fill it up. Because as we know, in the comfort zone, there's, there's no growth in the comfort zone. <laughs> no growth in the comfort zone. <laughs> if you really don't want to do it well then you can keep being the guy that's in the back and guess what you're gonna be mad in six months when some other chef gets hired for a different shift and all of a sudden he's out making friends with everyone and he gets promoted and why does he get promoted well look at what the guy's doing but he's not as good as he's not as good as a cook as i am guess what they don't really care hmm. being making the food is only part of what they want you to do just like being a SEAL, doing the, doing missions is only part of what they what you need to do to do the mission. Oh, yeah. You can't just be tactically sound. You've got to have the relationships built so you can work in the battle space that's owned by a conventional commander. 
you got to have the relationship that you can get your missions approved up the chain of command on the special operations side. How do you do that? You build. You go out, you talk to people, you get out of your comfort zone. And so no idea works unless you're willing to roll up your sleeves, do the practice, invest the time, put in the effort, do the work. I think we've all observed a lot of people who they love reading the books, they love showing up at the courses, they do all the online training and nothing ever changes. And they say, well, you know, I don't know why it doesn't change, why my life doesn't change, why my thinking doesn't change, why my performance doesn't change, why my relationships don't change. Well, it's because ideas don't work if you don't execute on them. So if you look at the great business builders, you look at any great performer, one thing that makes them great is their grit. One thing that makes them great is their hunger to practice. One thing that makes them great is they are willing to sacrifice. I mean, yes, they're passionate, but did you know the root of the word passion is suffering? You've gotta be willing to suffer for your vision. You've gotta be willing to suffer to reach BIW, best in world. You've gotta be willing to suffer the ridicule and laughter of your critics and your cynics to get to a place called world class. And let me tell you, this thing was spectacular. It was the most elegant piece of technology I'd ever used. The user interface was incredible. The design was spectacular. I absolutely loved it. It was easy to use and it was bright and gorgeous and fantastic. It didn't work on iTunes, which is a different problem, so I couldn't use it, but, but it was amazing. <laughs> and elegant, my God, it was elegant. So I'm sitting in the back of a taxi with a very senior Apple executive, sort of employee number 12 kind of guy. And, you know, I like to stir pots. So I turned to him, I said, you know, Microsoft gave me their new Zoom. And it is so much better than your iPod Touch. And he turned to me and he said, I have no doubt. Conversation over. Because the infinite player understands sometimes you're ahead and sometimes you're behind. Sometimes your product is better and sometimes it's worse. The goal isn't to be the best every day. The goal isn't to, out, to outdo your competition every day. That's a finite construction. If I had said to Microsoft, I've got the new iPod Touch and it's so much better than your Zoom, they would have said, can we see it? What does it do? React, 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 react. Finite players play to, be be to beat the people around them. Infinite players play to be better than themselves. To wake up every single day and say, how can we make our company a better version of itself today than it was yesterday? How can we create a product this week, that's better than the product we created last week. We also have to play the infinite game. It's not about being ranked number one. It's not about having more followers on Twitter than your friends. It's not about outdoing anyone. It's about how to outdo yourself. It's not about selling more books or getting more TED views than somebody else. It's about how to make sure that the work that you're producing is better than the work you produced before. You are your competition. And that is what ensures you stay in the game the longest. And that is what ensures you find joy. Because the joy comes not from comparison, but from advancement. How many of you struggle with perfectionism a little bit? Okay, so my favorite story is that someone sent me an email one time that said, hey, I know you have a book on shame, not so interested in that, but when if you ever write on perfectionism, I can't wait. <laughs> So here's the, here's the secret. When perfectionism is driving, shame is always riding shotgun. 
and fear is the annoying backseat driver. Say it again. When, when perfectionism is driving, shame is always riding shotgun. We struggle with perfectionism in areas where we feel most vulnerable to shame. Does that make sense? So we're all comfortable saying, yeah, I'm a little perfectionistic, which is code for like, I do things really well. Um, but I don't really, I'm not comfortable saying I have shame, but perfectionism, what is that? I call it the 20 ton shield. Here's what perfectionism really is. It's a way of thinking that says this, if I look perfect, live perfect, work perfect, I can avoid or minimize criticism, blame, and ridicule. Whoa, that's good. All perfectionism is, is the 20 ton shield that we carry around hoping that it'll keep us from being hurt. When in truth, what it does is it keeps us from being seen. And so we had a great talk about yes. what's the difference between perfectionism. Yes, because somebody on my staff had the nerve to tell me that I was a perfectionist. And I absolutely deny that. And you stood by me, thank you very much. <laughs> Because I'm not a perfectionist. I'm a person who strives for excellence and requires excellence. There, there is a difference, is there not? There is a difference. Here's the difference. Because sometimes I'm a healthy striver. Yeah. And sometimes I'm a perfectionist. It depends on if I'm feeling, if I've got a worthiness crunch going yeah. on. So healthy striving is internally focused. It's I want to do this and be the best I can be. Perfectionism is not about what I want. It's perfectionism is exactly what will people think. think.